Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, chapter 11 of our book club. And today we are going to talk about modeling visual data. Uh, so let me share my screen. And so the, the, the topic, as I said, for today is uh, a statistical modeling of spatial data. Uh, the main objectives are quantifying the relationship between variables, predicting the outcome of, of observations, and then apply a model-based approach. What is Clear by the end of this uh, introduction. Obviously, this is just an introduction uh, about spatial modeling because it's a vast uh, topic. Uh, and so um, we can, uh, just to get into the meaning of, of, of the topic, we can uh, just uh, jump into, uh, have a look at some data. Uh, and see uh, what's happened when we apply a model uh, on spatial data. Uh, here we use uh, uh, the North Carolina um, SIDS data. Uh, we already used this uh, in previous chapters. Uh, and um, so they, uh, for short, uh, called MC spatial data. So we load the library diverse and simple feature. And then to, to load this um, uh, North Carolina uh, data, you need to use this uh, simple system. And then, so this data uh, contains uh, information about 100 North of North Carolina and includes the counts of number of live births, uh, uh, also the counts for non-white live births, number of sudden infant deaths. This is for a period that goes from 1974 to 1984. It, it, it is actually split into um, subsets, like 1974 to 78, and then 79 to 84. We are going to use just the first one, 74 to 78, just for uh, having a look at the data. So the variables that we need are this one here, the SIDS, so the Southern Infant Death Syndrome, live birth in counts, and non-white birth in counts. Okay. Also, I'd like to uh, point on this uh, that I found because I was looking at more information about this data. And so um, I found that which I put in the chat. Uh, this is a, a wider uh, specification of the data set, and uh, as well as uh, this one here, which is. The, the one uh, that is also mentioned in the book. But I'd like to share this with you. Uh, this is a collection of other data sets. So that, that is uh, very nice. Very OK, so going back to where we were. So we are talking about uh, North Carolina inside. So I said we need just these three. Uh, information uh, in the data set, but it obviously contains more. So there is the area uh, and other things, the, the city, the names, and whatever, uh, and also a geometry. So when you uh, you need to think about spatial modeling, uh, there, there are a few differences uh, between using uh, spatial data for modeling than um, any other type of data. Uh, but uh, because you need to consider a few things that we I will mention um, in a few seconds. But um, generally, 
you can just uh, use the same uh, techniques and procedures that you use for any other type of data. So they are spatial data, but they can be treated as a, a data frame. Okay, so in fact, for example, this is a simple seizure, okay, uh, but we can select some information simply just as simply as that. And as you can see, a simple seizure collection, in this case, it is a multi polygon, and so we have some information the bonding box, the coordinate reference system. Uh, one more is uh, extra uh, vector colon list, okay, which is uh, it is it is a list, uh, which is the geometry. And even if you manipulate uh, spatial data data frame, um, you uh, all if, if if it is a simple feature, it will always contain the geometry. Okay, you must do. Um, uh, a first step to um, take the geometry off of the of the so you find the geometry automatically there. Okay, so let's uh, uh, so make a, a list of manipulation, which has already been done in the previous chapter, but just to revisit a bit. So we like to have the proportion of these things. So uh, we do the the sudden death in seventy four divided by the birth. Uh, in this case, white. Okay, and these are no white. Okay, so basically we do the same thing. Sudden that white, and sudden that no white. Uh, sorry, sudden that white, and the new bed, uh, no white. Okay, on white bed in uh, seventy four. Okay, so newborn. Uh, and this is our new, uh, we have a quick look, uh, our new information. So we now, uh, we have made a manipulation, a simple transformation of a simple feature. Okay, but we still uh, retain the geometry. Okay, now we we have our data. So we like to make a model. Obviously, all the best practices for making a model stay. Okay, stay. So you need to know the data, think about what your answer that uh, I mean, um, to, for your research questions and so so all, all the things stay okay so but um, we like here to highlight the, the, the bit of uh, the differences between normal modeling and spatial modeling. So here um, as well uh, are making a model. We have the observed values, uh, and uh, that we this the uh, we like to investigate about what the information that we got, uh, thinking about the relationship. Okay, the, the the relationship between the information that will be able to explain the the variable that we are going to uh, estimate. Okay, and even predict. Uh, can you still hear me fine, right? Yes, we can still okay. hear you. Yeah. So we have the observed values, and then we have the, uh, which is split into the explain the variables that would, uh, would be able to explain uh, so our predictors. Okay, and then we have reminders. And this is the part of the variability which cannot be eliminated. Okay, so for now, to visually remind us, this is what we are going to do. So we have a response, we have an intercept, and um, a species that we are going to estimate. Um, Across a predictor or more than one predictor, which are the SPS, and then the residuals. So this is a best best explained elsewhere, but the residual splits on two. Okay, a part of this residual 
can be addressed, so we use it, uh, models and everything. Uh, um, a further part of this residual cannot be uh, avoided. So that's why when you make a model, you always need to consider a margin of value. Okay, so the first step uh, here, uh, we like to um, uh, make a, a linear model. So we do a linear regression uh, on our spatial data. So we make it for the uh, infant that this one we have just created. It would like to be explained by the known wide proportion of newborn, or um, which is the proportion of uh, no white uh, born on new on on newborn. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and so fit this with a room type function. And we see that the non white form proportion uh, is positive. So it means any unit change of the in the number of the inspection, we explain um, with would be explained by an increase of non white uh, bonds. Okay. This is just to something, okay, that might be to investigate for. Okay, so we like to make a prediction. In order to do that, we use the prediction function, which uh, nicely relates the fit, lower value, and the value. So we basically fit, um, so we make uh, on our data. And we specify that the interval that we want is a prediction, which could be a um, percentage, it could be a probability. Okay, then we can do back rows and name. We still have the same data set because we use this one. Um, we predict on an hierarchical uh, one, which is this one here. Okay, uh, and um, we bind the uh, call, we see that the moment Yeah. Uh, bed, bed, bed. We need some focus of uh, Okay. Yeah. 
Hello. Hello. I I cannot hear your voices about for five minutes. I did not hear your voice clearly. Yeah, I think that you try to explain the some kind of a data, special data or correlation in here, but. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was able to hear the voice. I think that there is something wrong with your Bluetooth connection, so. Hello? Hello, yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Hello? Maya? Yeah. Um, what about Derek? Can you hear her voice? Uh, I can please. hear both of you, but yes, the internet is a little slow. Yeah. So. Okay. So okay, let let's see if I can. Uh... Maybe I think that I recommend you to close in some, some of the, your web, uh, your tab in the Chrome, cause you have a too many, too many yeah. web, yeah, too many tabs in your Chrome program to, okay. to save your, your RAM memory. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, but a little bit, yeah, a little bit. You need to uh, uh, lower uh, sign. Pull, yeah. pull, up, pull up your your uh, volume as much as possible because I'm kind of just down with nonsense. So oh, okay. Hold on. Check your uh, volume is up. Yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All good. So yeah. Let's, uh, let's go forward. I said that that autocorrelation is something that mm -hmm. is embedded within spatial data. So mm -hmm. when we do cross validation, which implies not correlation mm -hmm. of the predictors, we need to mm -hmm. not make a simple cross validation because otherwise it 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 might lead to uh, overestimations. Uh, mm -hmm. But we can overcome this problem with other uh, functions which are already um, customized for uh, considering uh, spatial autocorrelation. And they are spatial sample, cast, ML3 spatial, and ML3 spatial temporal cross validation. Okay, so you can, you want the, uh, the things, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Let's go forward because I've got the exercises which are nice to have a look at. I found uh, the solution. <laughs> so, okay. So let's. Okay. Uh, also, when if you don't hear me as well, just advise. Check your volume uh, uh, if it's up. Otherwise, advise. Okay. Support and statistical modeling. What's happened here is this that um, points, spatial points. Okay um are con constant values okay on earth and you are uh you need to look at think about your analysis your research if you are modeling uh points you need to consider if these points are moving such as you are modeling animals then jump around or if you are modeling land so they, you need to consider the, the, those things. And then the values that if they can be aggregated or, or not aggregated. And then um, also uh, you need to consider that the geometry, 
it's an identity. Okay, so that that is that it cannot change if you uh, even if you apply on it. Okay, so just assuming this a bit. Uh, also, statistical analysis of spatial temporal data proceed either by reducing time, uh, then working on the pro problem spatially. Time, uh, it, this can be done time first and space later, or reducing space, then working on the problem temporally. And so that means space first and time later. So you, so you can see you can even do spatial temporal analysis, okay? And when you uh, consider time within your predictive model, you might want to think about if you want to do time first or space later or space first and time later. So that's all like bullet points to think about. Okay, one more interesting thing is design-based and model-based inference. So statistical inference means the action of estimating parameters about a population from sample data. And this is it, okay? We have two possibilities to proceed, model-based or design-based. So model-based is, you know, you have a population and you want to analyze this population, which assumes a superpopulation model, okay, that you are trying to identify. You use the basis on a super assumed a superpopulation. While design based, it's more uh, uh, randomness um, assumptions within delegations. Uh, in particular, I mentioned unweighted sample means that are used to estimate the population mean and non-model parameters, okay? So basically what the parameters of our model would be basically the sample mean, okay? Uh, while the, um, again, a further um, subclassification of the two uh, types, so the model base, it, be is, it is, uh, it's best for predictions that are required for small area, and uh, the available data uh, are usually not random, okay, observed value. Um, while design base, they are more like spatial random samplings, uh, need for data aggregations, uh, they are not sensitive estimates. Uh, that means that they are usually used for regulatory or legal purposes. So this is ba basically the difference uh, of a model-based and design-based approach. Okay, finally, uh, predictive models with coordinates. Okay, so uh, models should, should also not be sensitive to arbitrary rotation of the land or latitude. Okay, so that, that's uh, reasonable, so it makes sense. Assume sample data to be independent allow for spatial and temporal autocorrelation of residuals. That means adaptive cross-validation measures, such as spatial cross-validation might help get more relevant measures for predictive performance. Okay, so these are three bullet points. Um, so very important. Okay, so this is done. This is basically uh, a bit of like bit of like a summary of the the chapter. Then I wanted to have a look at the exercises. Okay, the first exercise use this um, uh, the data that we used before, North Carolina one, the one with the transformation of the data, and ask for um, a random forest model to predict instead of the linear model, to use a random model and then compare the two results. 
So it suggests to use this library random forest. So you do that just run instead of LM, do random forest. And then predict the disease of the random forest. Uh, and we can see that these are the, the new uh, data. Okay. Uh, and I have made a plot with ggplot instead of using the plot function as in the, in the book. And so in order to do that, this is why I, I did this. You need to have a data frame. And so you make uh, a selection of the, the two values that you want. And you can use it as a data frame inside a ggplot fun uh, function. And so I made a, the point, a geomob line. And we can see quickly that all the points here are concentrated on the very uh, bottom left um, of the panel. And, um, and so this is the, the line which divides uh, positive and negative uh, association. What else uh, we can do? Uh, we are going to compare the two now. So we now create a new data set, uh, sampling a thousand points from the North Carolina data set, and then rerun the linear regression model and compare the things. Um, to do that, you cannot, like I tried to use the tidy web syntax, like SD sample and then pipe, SD intersection, but it doesn't, doesn't work. So you need to do that. Uh, so you sample the North Carolina original data to a thousand and then extrapolate um, the intersection, SD intersection with the one uh, with the transformation. And so I created a third um, North Carolina uh, spatial data. This is the, the first switch that we made with the linear model. And so these were the, uh, the results, which were positive. And we had um, an R square, adjusted R square, of 0.33. Uh, instead of doing a linear model on this new data, so we sample uh, and extrapolate the, the points, we see that things change a bit, okay, uh, but the S-square is quite the same. So no point, the adjusted S-square is quite the same. Do we have any things to add and said the standard error has decreased with a factor of three it basically the variability of the points is that reducing the the number of um, the, the points to a thousand what changes is basically mainly the variability yeah mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. what else we do is uh, 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 doing the, a prediction. Oops. We do a prediction um, and then, uh, uh, so there is this prediction uh, one and prediction two. Okay, one on uh, our first data set and one on the third just on a thousand uh, points. And so we can see that the mean difference um, of the first prediction is no point no no five. 
while the other one is a better fit. I mean, this uh, of the confidence interval, so the upper and lower, lower upper bar. Yeah, then we can see the, the confidence interval here. Uh, this is done again. Um, the upper uh, and lower bound of the confidence intervals, uh, uh, we see that they are, uh, they have uh, like four, uh, four points. Yeah, okay. So here is the variability mentioned. Yeah. Mm. yeah. This is the prediction. That means that I'm looking at the upper and the lower bound of the prediction. And this is the confidence interval. And I'm looking at the upper and the lower bound. You can see this uh, more precisely uh, about yeah. uh, okay, so. This is the, the first. So this is the first fit. This is the second fit on uh, the one with a thousand points. Obviously, this um, as you can see, um, it's the prediction of the Revenge. If we have a look at this, key, this is prediction one. Okay, so we have a, a interval as a prediction. So we have the, the fit which is the estimated value, the lower and the upper, upper bar. Well, while if we do the confidence interval, okay. So this is the uh, so this the the estimation is uh, is the same, but the lower and the upper bounds are different. Now now this is a little bit confusing, but does it make sense? Yeah. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, third exercise. Okay. So this is basically a confirmation of what they said here. The standard error as decreases with the factor. The exercise three says to use the waterland uh, data, which is uh, this L7ETM.tif, which is a star, um, uh, type star, uh, and it is from the stars package, uh, and asks to do the classification using the uh, CNN, um, KNN, 
um, modeling with the, from, the, from the CLAP package. So we know the label starts. Uh, these teeth, what are they? These teeth type of files are images. Okay, very specific uh, of the land surface. So it's like very um, real image of, of the earth. Uh, there is a lot of pixels and uh, it's more than a raster, I think, okay. Um, so we use read stars on this teeth.tiff file. We use read stars. Uh, and so when, uh, this is something that I wasn't sure about that, but I had the confirmation today. So if you do the, you, if you put the, uh, your call inside the bracket, it, uh, it releases the, the output. So usually if you do a, assign um, a call to a variable, nothing, you don't see the output. If you put everything inside the bracket, it releases the output automatically. Okay, so we can see that the output of this, so this R contains now the information of our TIF file. And what is it? So we have the X and the Y information, and we have a band. Okay. So usually the band R. Uh, use it for cassettes to use the band and see uh, different things, uh, colors, depends by the information of the this file. Uh, so this one here, uh, it's um, this file, see, it is a waterline, okay. And um, what else we can see? So there, there are some uh, like uh, other information such as the minimum, the maximum value, the, the median, the mean of the information. Okay, so we basically can set uh, a boundary box of this files of star type of stars and then we do spatial temporal data as spatial features okay and so we can transform the bo the box as a spatial features and then extrapolate as spatial uh, temporal sample of 20. Okay, and so then we uh, extract these values of the boundary box uh, from our uh, stars files, so our teeth image, so that we assign this uh, to a new variable that we use later, and we see how. So the our R uh object is a stars uh, and has this dimension so we have this number of observations uh, and then uh, if we do a bit of like manipulation the on the e element that it is the the one that we just extrapolated from the boundary box so we take the boundary box and we extract the boundary box from the t file and so we assign to E. This E, uh, to make a ggplot, uh, instead of using the plot function, we need uh, a data frame, okay? So we need to extrapolate the coordinate, put it as a table, and then I assign a label, one to 20, uh, and then when this label 
it, these values, A, 14, 15, and, 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 and so on, one is land and the other is water. Okay, so then we can plot it, pg plot stars, geom stars, and just the data. Let's have a look at this nice uh, things on our studio. Uh, so we have this PIF file, okay, which is just the position now loaded from the system. So if I do uh, what I mentioned is this. If I do this, I cannot see the output. If I do this with the with brackets, I can see the output. Okay. So this my R is a P file. Uh, we get some information. As I said, uh, we use this uh, SPT box function, so we can see that we got the um the what is the boundary box now this is a p file okay so it's not normally just uh coordinates so we need to transform this value uh with this function which is uh convert Foreign geometry object to a simple feature object. Okay. Any questions? Uh, you will just jump in. Um, and so if we do this, for example. Uh, we work here. Okay, we do a C as S as P. We now have a simple feature, which is a polygon. Um, and the boundary box is still the same. Okay, coordinate reference system and the polygon specification. What we do now is sampling. Um, but we need to, to do SP sampling. We take 20 samples. And now we have 20 features. This is the set for one feature. Now we have 20 features. And then what we do, this is, is point, there's a, such a grid, okay? It's a grid or like, Five points. This, uh, this is uh, a good point <laughs> uh, about points. So um, we can extract this uh, sample features from our uh, PIF file. And we can see that we have a geometry and a band. Okay, one from 20. Uh, and so what I did it is um, if you do this, you can see that it is a simple feature now, and you have some geometry here and some information. Then you do the coordinates, and you, you now have the coordinates. You do as a keyboard, and it is now a keyboard. And then I basically uh, made this thing because uh, I wanted to use ggplot. So now I have the label and the group. So I can use geom star. If I use just geom star, just with the data, nothing else. Okay. You use geom star just with the data, and the data has to be a star. Type of type type stars, but this is the result. Uh, where am I? Okay, so now in the chapter, 
Indication. I think you can see here. In this after, where is it? Okay, can you see it? Yeah? Can you see this? Yes, yes. we can see it on that yeah. edge. Uh, so this is what was in the, in the um, uh, solutions of the exercises. Okay, so this is the same file. But now I made it on, made, made, if, you, if you make it on uh, with um, ggplot, and, and geom gg star is a geom star you, you have this type of uh, result and then you add the information with the geom text for example you can do that uh, using this e uh, data frame that i just made label grouping and everything and so now, these random points have been located. Okay, so what we are going to you say, do, 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 what? Okay, we are going, going now to apply uh, KNN to these points. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we do split R. So if we split our uh, original um, is in the expression so this this function from start uh, basically uh, split the object okay and um, then we can uh, basically extract the points, uh, the 20 points here, the, these points. And so we create a new variable. Uh, what we do again is doing a part is a land, the other is water. And then we use this class uh, package uh, and so selecting some uh, of the things we can apply. Okay, we can apply the KNN on the the track. track. Okay. And then test uh, using the test and the, the these two that we just created. Oh, because I'm not used to do it this way. <laughs> okay, and so this is the training and the test. Yeah. So we created basically the training and the test set. And then we apply this on K and N modeling. And then we plot it. Let's do the plot function. So they, the result is basically grouping uh, the, the numbers that we had here. And so they call it the, 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 the part of the panel uh, based on uh, the grouping. Let's see if it Have you got any questions? One is land, this is ours, yeah. 
one is water. Then we use KNN from plus seven to plus ten. Nearest neighbor classification. And we specify that this is the training and test. From the speech. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so the last uh, one, we have a few minutes left. It's the fourth exercise, which uh, brings us back to uh, North Carolina. Freedom. Hmm. Uh, and so we did a linear model for North Carolina. Uh, and now we like to use uh, a K and N uh, technique, just as we did it. Uh, and then a validate. Okay, so we create a new, uh, this is our NC1, uh, North Carolina uh, 1, which is this. Okay, so basically, was the one that we made a modification, and we have even the result of the random forest. Uh, and so, what we do is basically looking at the centroids, and then transform them as a coordinate. And so, we have this uh, PC. Uh, new coordinates. And why we do that? Because we now need the coordinates, or if we bind calls and then transmute uh, all these things, call it X, X, Y, Y, Sig, Sig, and, and whatever it is. Okay, now we don't have the geometry. So we have X, Y, and the two information. So the geometry is that. Okay. So basically, um, extrapolated the centroid and put them as a coordinate. So this is what we need. We do a linear model uh, with, the, with this data, and this is the summary. Okay. So you remind yourself that was the, the value, no 0.33 for the R square. This is positive. And what else is there? So, so we do another one, but now we make we add the different choice okay, to the model. We make a summary. And we see that we this increases, uh, so decreases. Uh, it is still significant, and the adjusted square uh, raises a bit. If you would like to add anything, we make another model with some interaction change uh, due to uh, autocorrelation between centroids. And we see that this stays, nothing changes, so we might be the right track, and this goes back. Uh, then we do the prediction, prediction zero, one, and two, uh, with the three models that we just made. And then um, to have a look at this data, Okay, uh, we use this uh, spatial point as stars and then we map. So we make it as a star. Okay, so that we can use geom stars. Then we can facet wrap the attributes, which is the things that is there. Before it was a band, now it's attributes. 
to do after this. So these are the three predictions uh, and then other functionalities and everything. So we have the, the three prediction here. So we can see that this is the first model without an so uh, centroid and uh, interactions. And these two are centroid and interactions. You can see that these two are similar and this is uh, And then finally, there is a bit of code uh, here to do the K, uh, K and N. So this is test one. The same as before. So now we want to see uh, the grouping things. Uh, um, as we did it previously. Uh, and so we select the information that we need. We assign in this to a new uh, name. So this is the test. Uh, and this is the application of the nearest uh, neighbor. So now our uh, uh, S is, is this object. And um, so basically we do again. Uh, and we create the test two. Uh, uh, training and test two with the other um, information, the other type of model. Then we apply this thing. To the second, and then we finally plot it. So as you can see, we have the border like in the three boxes. Those are similar. Okay. Okay, so this is it. So thank you very much. You actually solved all the exercise.